An hour before the wave comes, just ten short minutes before the earthquake shakes her world to pieces, Yuki starts to smile. At first, it's too, almost too small to see, but the smile is real and therefore beautiful, and Grandpa spots it at once from across the table. He feels his own face mirroring hers, the deep lines on his forehead relaxing. Ah, he thinks. Maybe it's all going to be okay. Maybe I'll be the one to bring you back to life, Yuki-chan, and rescue you from your troubles. And you can again be that girl who wanted to fly the biggest carp kites on the coast of northern Japan, no matter how strong the wind came thrumming off the sea. Who demanded to light the fireworks yourself when we launched rockets from the hill on warm summer nights. His bad dream of last night dissolves in his granddaughter's smile. She's trying to maintain some precious teen cool, he can see that. But she can't quite manage, and the smile's kind of out of control now. Lifting her mouth, spreading, brightening her eyes like winter sunshine. Grandpa Jiro watches and waits patiently as she pushes a, pushes a hand through her long, not quite black hair, her eyes fixed on the drawing in front of her. The clock in the kitchen ticks a loud minute, then the heater purrs away under the table. Finally, Grandpa clears his throat. Well, Yu chan what do you say? Yuki tilts her head, considering. Outside the old family house, she can hear the pines sighing in a cold March wind, a few crows calling blackly like always. But under the quilt at the sunken kotatsu table, it's warm and snug, and it feels so good to be here again. She looks up from the sketchbooks to find her grandfather peering back at her, his fast white eyebrows arched. Yu Chen, you're damn well smiling. The first time I've seen you do that since you arrived. I smiled at least twice yesterday, Grandpa. Hmm. When? At the restaurant. At the station? Well, just about, I guess. He taps the table with a heavy index finger. Anyway, the point is that this old stuff of yours is so very good, Yuki. She pulls a face. But all kids do drawings like these. No, you're wrong. There's real energy in them. And focus. You know, I know what I'm talking about. Look how you place it all on the paper. I kind of remember them being bigger. He laughs. Sometimes you drew huge seascapes, and you'd yell, Grandpa, more paper, and I'd have to tape extra sheets on the sides, Yu Chen. Yu Chen no Kaito Umi Ga Afuriteta Yo. My seas, what? He repeats the Japanese slowly. I said, the seas you drew used to overflow. The more paper I taped on, the more you kept ad adding wave after wave. Sorry, my Japanese is so rusty. Mum keeps correcting my verbs all the time. I never care what damn politeness level you use, as long as you're talking to me. And you always get quicker when you're here. Your Japanese is fine. He points at the sketchbooks, stacked in the black biscuits tin, their Japanese cloth covers glowing burnt orange, indigo, moss green. We're supposed to be talking about how good your old drawings are. Most little kids don't do the amount you did, and they certainly don't do anything as good as these. Remember, you're talking to a Tezuka Award winner. He puffs his chest out, pulling down the corners of his mouth like some fierce Japanese owner, ogre. A big shot. Right, he laughs. Only you know how to talk to me, Yuki. I've missed that. You should put an award out on a shelf or something. Pa, he wafts the short away. I'd forgotten old half-wave. He used to be all you talked about. Kind of part of the family. Something catches in his throat, and he clears it loudly again. You work like a real pro, Yuki. Look.